good morning and uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, conclave i got to know through the various presentation that you've made today about the service that pratidin is doing as the fourth pillar of our democracy and that is a very critical role to play in any part of the country but more so to play it in the northeast for whom connectivity sharing of information and keeping democratic uh, spirit alive are absolutely essential particularly when government of india's policy since the time of atal bihari vajpayee ji has been not just to look east but also to act east so as a very vibrant force of democracy i appreciate the emphasis that you have laid on responsible journalism so in that uh, spirit participating and inaugurating this conclave wherein you will probably have several panels who are going to be discussing the panelists are going to be discussing on various issues pertaining to the northeast so i can provide the grist for this mill or fodder for the churning call it what you wish i just said want to explain and take this opportunity to put before you the work that has been done particularly for the northeast by the government led by honorable shri prime minister modi ji since 2014 if i were to just start with uh, a very symbolic point but that symbolism together with the actual reality of what gets done after that is of critical importance which of course in its various shades you will take it up for discussion later in the last 9 years honorable prime minister has visited the northeast 60 times 60 times and if you were to put it all together each minister minister in the cabinet minister of state minister belonging to the council of ministers in the 9 years 400 visits have happened of ministers and mos so i just want to underline the importance that we give for the eight northeast states so all put together with these visits after all these visits are not just to enjoy the beauty of northeast which of course we savor each time enjoy each time the cuisines the people distinct culture that the northeast beautifully showcases which we also made sure had a big role in the g20 hosting of the g20 events so we do visit to savor the flavor of northeast but the primary motive and cost behind the visits is to ensure that the scheme or the program of the concerned ministers departments are taken out effectively to the northeast and therefore when i say 400 visits of ministers and 60 visit of the prime minister has been clearly to make sure that northeast eight sisters ashta lakshmi as we call them are given the center of uh, focus and programs which have been waiting for decades together get launched so when uh, there is a sankalp taken almost a oath taken which is stated in your manifesto each time you go for an election whether it's 2014 or 2019 or even earlier when that sankalp that is why our manifesto is called sankalp patra when that sankalp is taken you're voted to power we ensure and that is the 
one code which the Prime Minister never violates. That sankalp is taken till Siddhi, till you achieve, till you attain that goal. So sankalp se Siddhi is something which is underlined each time when we meet, when we discuss, when Council of Ministers are brought together to say, all right, now let's see what has been done for a particular region or for a particular program and so on. So the first thing which comes to my mind is the connectivity related issues which have been addressed for the Northeast, each state of the Northeast, not just symbolically. I'll go into the detail later, but I'll to the, at the beginning recall those very signature con connectivity related projects which have got completed under Prime Minister Modi. A Samson Bogibil bridge inaugurated in 2018, 16 years after its announcement. Bupen Hazarika Setu, that is the Dola Sadia bridge, announced in 2003 and got inaugurated in 2017. Pakyong Airport in Sikkim, completion of gauge conversion uh, for the entire Northeast region and connection of state capitals such as of Arunachal Pradesh and of Tripura with rail network, which didn't have any rail connectivity till then. The goods and services tax, in spite of all the apprehensions people had earlier, what would it bring? Is it really necessary to have one tax, one nation? Really will it improve the tax collection and so on? Not just tax collection has improved, but even in areas where manufacturing activities are lesser, that's not to say manufacturing states have lesser collection. They get it both as manufacturing state and also consuming states. But where states like Northeast have lesser manufacturing activities, consumer, GST is a consumer based tax, consumption based tax. The collection of the GST and also the devolution, both the state GST and also the IGST has actually resulted in good revenue generation for the Northeast states. Northeastern states have been the biggest beneficiary of GST, uh, recording a compound annual GST revenue, recording an annual GST revenue growth rate of 27.5% since the implementation of GST. Why is 27.5 big? So what? Yes. Is it big? Yes, it is big because what was being collected, and I'm basing my numbers on RBI's data. Now, annual GST growth rate is 27.5% is what I told you a minute ago. What was it before? Prior to the GST implementation, what was the annual, compound annual, indirect tax collection in the states? Pre-GST, it could be VAT. It was only 14.8. So where you were collecting or where you were growing compound annual, 14.8. Now it is growing at 27.5. I'm talking of northeast states only. So that's the kind of great breather, breathing space that you open, obtained. That additional gain that is coming through because of GST is definitely a boon for states which need that revenue for doing so many different programs in the states. Now, they have a broad picture that I've laid before you. I'll go to the budgetary allocations to the Northeast. Tax devolution to the Northeast has quadrupled. That is 4.67 times it has grown. And now it is 5.06 lakh crores 
between 2014 and 24. That is, I am giving you figures up to July 2023. It is now 5.06 lakh crores is what I told you. What was it before? I am accounting from 14 to 23. 2014 to 23. What was it before? Just 1.08 lakh crores. Where is 1.08 lakh crores and where is today 5.06 lakh crores? That's why I said it's grown up four times. Tax devolution to Assam increased 217.71%. Two, it was 64,415 crores. Now it is 2.4652 2, 4,652 crores. Just one Assam. Grant in aid. Numbers don't impress numbers don't seem to impress you at all. Four times increase. No, no good. Grant in aid to the Northeast have more than doubled to 4.94 lakh crores uh, between 14 23, whereas it was 2.38 lakh crores before 14. Under 10% of gross budgetary support, which is ex extended, 4.33 lakh crores have been spent in Northeast since 2014-15 uh, by 55 different ministries of the government, ministries and departments, which is more than the cumulative spending in the last 25 years before that. So, budget dwara, that which goes through the budget, between 2014-15 to 23, is become now 4.33 lakh crores, and that comes through 55 different ministries and departments. And if you take all the 25 years prior to 14 and put it all together, it is much more than what you have received in those 25 years. Then, since 2020-2021, when we started capital expenditure emphasis and gave states interest-free 50-year loans, which you can use for capital asset creation, 15,440 crores have been provided under that category. That is interest-free, you can keep it for 50 years, you don't need to return in bits, bits and pieces, no principal, no interest in between. After 50 years you return that, it actually means it's almost like a grant given. That is 15,440 crores which has been given just between 2021, 2021, 22, 22, 23 this year. There are, of course, schemes. I'm not going to go into the details. Just for a few sample, PM Mudra Yojana, as of 13 September 2023, has received 1.39... Uh, uh, am I right in saying this? It has received 73,821 crores in Mudra Yojana, which have been disbursed to the people. Jeevan Jyoti Bhima receives 278 crores. Suraksha Bhima receives 17 crores. Atal Pension Yojana receives 17 crores. I'm rounding it off. Stand Up Alone gets 591 crores. PM Swanidhi gets 1.5 lakh loans sanctioned. So that is the kind of emphasis we have been giving through the government schemes which more to empower people. Now recently I had done a review of the regional rural banks because particularly for the northeast, for the far-flung areas where access to banking facility is very minimal, the regional rural banks which are sponsored by big public sector banks, 
somewhat also contributed to by states government state governments these rural uh, regional rural banks um are spread across all the northeast states uh the review that i did is first of its kind it was held in tripura the data which is come out of that is very interesting and i'm sure you would have your journalists go into details of these to see if there are any new suggestions that can come for the rrbs to function better we are very inclined to have them lot more uh, active their uh, internet facilities bank uh, internet banking facilities and digitized banking facilities are all being strengthened so i just want to give you rrbs cater to the banking needs about 38% of people in the rural areas in the northeast government of india decided to infuse 10890 crore of capital in the rrbs between 21 22 and 22 23 and government of india share is more than 50% in this now credit outreach programs were conducted not just by the north rrbs but also through other banks in nagaland uh, credit worth 20, 220 crores were given in sikkim 3450 crores also have been sanctioned so there are several ways through which not just the visits of the ministers but program based lending for people who need money to develop their business has been very carefully tailored and taken up now under the self help groups in the northeast as well lot of activities and progress has been made i'll just highlight a few the number of sgs linked with banks in the northeast has more than doubled uh, since 2014 it was 300 and, uh, uh, sorry 3.16 lakhs of sg groups in the northeast in 2014 3.16 lakh now in 2023 we see that number having gone up to 7.93 lakhs of sgs so when there is an sg many programs of the center can go through them women get empowered activity happens in the ground the spillover of that actually builds a economic ecosystem which itself will help uh, uplift the economy so the emphasis given to the sgs has shown in the numbers of sgs which have grown between 2014 and 2023 actually doubled more than doubled now total savings of these sgs in the northeast have also increased and they have increased nearly tenfold um, it was 128 crore in 2014 sg group savings that's gone up to 1270 crores in 2023 these are the actual rural women holding money in bank accounts with which they help their members if they want to do some activity if they want to purchase an equipment or if they think there is a necessary expenditure which they have to undertake in the rural in their family in in the area in which they live government money passes these many hands but reaches the ultimate beneficiary who are the women in the rural areas so average saving per sg in the northeast has increased from 4073 per group in 2014 so for each one of these group the average saving was 4073 rupees now it's gone to 15634 rupees per group in 2023 so the groups are doing activities which is giving them money they are able to save this money and that saving per group is what i'm talking about so it's actually showing that economic activity is robust it is reaching these groups and after all when women's activities are generating income it benefits that area it benefits the family of individual members of that group 
I want to also highlight that other than just giving money for capital expenditure, we also wanted to focus on livelihood development in the Northeast. You can undertake several projects, individuals can undertake several projects on their own, but unless there is a program which is flushing in money there, which can generate livelihood op op opportunities for people, it's not going to directly hit the job or money earning potential of people. So we came up with a well-designed program after due consultation with people from the Northeast, particularly involving the chief ministers of Northeast. This program was called PM Divine, but spelt as D-E-V-I-N because it is development of infrastructure in the Northeast. So D-E-V-I-N. V-I-N-E, 100% centrally funded. It's a central sector scheme. It was announced in 22-23 budget, the last year's budget. The scheme had an outlay of 6,000 crores for, for a four-year period from 22-23 up to 25-26, which will actually bring in the, or oh, it will bridge the gap in terms of developmental needs. Now, these programs have actually helped. I'm taking random examples. Those who were dealing with bamboo, those who wanted to move the bank bamboo that was being harvested. And when these bamboo was being har uh, harvested, bamboo moves from one place to another, the logistics, and having moved these bamboo get processed for such products which can become furniture, which can even become agarbati sticks, or it can be used for producing many usable products like flasks or drinking water glass or whatever. So in the bamboo value chain, everything that gets produced now has been treated comfortably and PM Divine has gone into that for creation of livelihood as one example, there are many others that will be brought in. So to develop the road around it for better connectivity so that this product can move from the place where it is getting harvested or there are several places from where it gets aggregated then moves to the place where it's getting processed. So this is one example but Taylor made such programs in the Northeast for all the states have been funded through PM Divine. I move to the very critical, strategically important, vibrant village program. Again for the Northeast, also for Ladakh, also for Uttarakhand, for all those bordering uh, areas, international bordering areas. These total allocation for that is 4,800 crores. Every state has been asked to identify those vibrant villages which are in the international border. Not just connectivity, meaning telephone connectivity, road connectivity, air connectivity and rail connectivity. Not just that. Rail is if possible. But otherwise all kinds of connectivity creating better housing there itself, providing them with water source and also any livelihood which can be undertaken there itself so that people don't vacate their villages, move down to places and keep the borders safe because there are eyes and ears in the international borders. That program has actually received a lot of attention Renewable energy is also one of the things that we are providing there. This focuses in 46 blocks abutting northern border and 19 districts of several Himalayan states inclusive of Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. So this gets reviewed by the Honorable Prime Minister every now and then. So it's not as if we've announced it and forgotten. We are actually getting it reviewed by the respective departments as much as PM himself. 
I myself have visited one such a village in uh, Sikkim, La Chain, if I can remember the name correct. There are externally aided projects also, where we get loans from ADB or World Bank and bring projects to the Northeast. Um, up to 80% of this project cost is borne completely by the center, and the remaining 20% is what is the counterfunding which is expected from the states themselves. 90% of the external component uh, will be passed on, meaning center bears it and passes it on. Um, yes, uh, one little correction. Only 10% of the loan component has to be paid by the state concern, not 20, as I said earlier, 10%. Now, at the moment, more than 40 projects of, with loan components of 47,300 crores have been cleared by the steering committee, and these are the projects which are getting implemented in the Northeast. There is a lot of project which I can list out as regards connectivity. All, without taking much of your time, I would want to highlight seven new uh, airports from nine operational airports in 2014. There are 16 airports operational in 2023. Udan scheme has ensured that airports in Rupsi, Tezu, Tezpur, Pasigat, Jorhat, Leelabari, Shillong, Pakyong, Itanagar and Dimapur have all become operationalized. It is in these nine years that they have become operationalized. So a total of 64 routes are being operationalized through these Udan ports. Besides this, 13 major infra projects, engineering projects, related to air infra, cumulatively worth 1,540 crores, are currently being implemented in the Northeast. I'll quickly move on to the railways. The 2023-24, the current year, railway budget for the Northeast railway budget for the northeast is more than 10,000 crores. Then the Prime Minister has inaugurated the northeast inaugural Vande Bharat Express connecting Guwahati with New Jalpaiguri. And faster train experience is being enjoyed by people. Vande Bharat Express will now connect Ma Kamakya Temple Kaziranga, Manas National Park, and Pobitra Wildlife Sanctuary as well. Nagaland got its second railway, that is railway station in Shokuvi in August 2022. And that is after a century, Nagaland getting a railway station. It may be the second station for Nagaland, but that comes after a full hundred years. Sixty railway stations in the Northeast have been identified for development under the Amrit Bharat Station Scheme. Foundation stone for 508 stations was laid by all over the country, that is, was laid by the Prime Minister. Out of this, 508, which is all over the country, 38 stations are from the Northeast. 19 railway infrastructure projects spanning 1,909 kilometers with an allocation of 80,000 crores are in the pipeline. And furthermore, rail sections of 1,618 kilometers have also commissioned in the Northeast. I quickly move to the roads. That's a story which all of you all are seeing. The connectivity is unbelievable for people who have been to Northeast nine years ago to see what has happened now. Between, in 2013-14, the total length of national highways 
in the northeast region was 8,480 kilometers, which has now doubled. And in 2022-23, that is the year which has ended, that has doubled to 15,735 kilometers. That's the extent to which, very quickly, roads have been ramped up. Waterways is a story of its own. 20 rivers in the Northeast were declared as national waterways under the National Waterways Act. So before 2014, there was only one national waterway in the Northeast. You know what it means. Maintenance, dredging, bringing in new uh, facilities, bonding, making sure that excess water flows properly and doesn't flood. Every such critical component once it's declared national waterways, is the responsibility of the center, with the cooperation of the state, obviously. So where it was just one national waterway before 2014, it has now become 20 rivers, which have been declared, all in northeast, which have been declared national waterways. Then, of course, you know that the comprehensive development of River Brahmaputra, NW2, national waterways, uh, number two, received 474 crores. F totally five projects in the inland waterways transport have been approved for 1,126 crores, only for the northeast, that is, one of which is the River Brahmaputra NW2, which gets 474 crores, the River Barak, gets, uh, in, that is, in, it is under the Indo-Bangladesh protocol route, gets 148 crores. Dansri River and Kopili gets 116 crores. River Pandu Port in uh, Gauhati gets, uh, that is, NW2 and NW, NH27, river and uh, highway, together gets 180 crore. And the ship repair facility at Pandu gets 208 crores. These are more in Assam itself. 208 crore for the ship repair facility in uh, Pandu. I'll move to talking about social and agricultural infrastructure. Again, that which will create better ecosystem for economic development and jobs. Recently, the government has launched the National Mission for Edible Oil, the palm oil bit, to increase cultivation of palm oil. Its increase itself is 700%, and today you have 3.4 lakh hectares of palm oil growing uh, area, and this is certainly going to bring in Self-sufficiency, Atma Nirbharta for us. More than 50% of the mission's 9,000 crore outlay is entirely accruing only for the Northeast. Northeast first aims in Guwahati was inaugurated and it was built at a cost of 1,123 crores. I'm purposely reading the amounts because the immensity of it within nine years, as opposed to what would have been earlier any number of decades, is something which proves that this government, led by Prime Minister Modi, is actually walking the talk. We are not just saying we are looking at Northeast, we are acting on Northeast, and Northeast today can have bigger dreams of dealing with the Southeast Asian nations, whether it's going to be grid connectivity, whether it's going to be trilateral highway, which has been pending for a long time, and so on. Vocal for local, one district, one product, I don't want to elaborate on it. There are seven more happening uh, like that. Uh, Asia's largest cancer care, I want to highlight on this point. In April 2022, Asia's largest cancer care network was launched by the Prime Minister by inaugurating seven hospitals and laying the foundation stone for seven more such cancer care centers. 
the pm vishwakarma yojana which was launched only a couple of days ago includes so many different um, crafts and art and also such uh, artisans who do work with their hands have all been brought under uh, and this scheme particularly with 14000 crores and that which is going to skill them give them kits a modern tool set and also give them 500 rupees stipend for attending the skilling training post that they will be eligible to get a highly subsidized in terms of interest loan for 1 lakh to start with and after that is repaid two more lakhs totaling 3 lakh will be given to each one of these vishwakarma not vishwakarma by cast alone but vishwakarma who does work like masonry Um, uh barbers carpenters you know people like that who i'm sure the northeast will immensely benefit from because such skilled people are in great number in the northeast coming to almost the end of what i want to speak i want to emphasis emphasize on the priority northeast gets in terms of improving educational infrastructure the government between 14 2014 and 23 has spent more than 14000 crores to promote higher education in the northeast 14000 crore between 2014 and 2023 in the northeast for promotion of higher education i'll just give you some examples 191 new institutes for higher education have been set up 30% increase in the number of universities set up since 2014 40% increase in central institutions of higher learning set up again between 2014 and 15 lastly more than 10000 crores under pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana had been spent and more than 64000 crores under the national food security act have also been spent which means people are not remaining hungry they are getting their basic grains to take care of their uh, families so the g20 which is something which i started off by saying have also been hosted in each one of the northeast states not one has been ignored where there were fears or suspicion that you know in the northeast some states Uh, one of our neighbor can protest but we went ahead we had it in states which uh, like arunachal which would have created a bit of a noise but we still went ahead so northeast in every possible way has been the priority of prime minister narendra modi and i've just put before you a sample of across the board how monies have been spent how foundation stone and launching of it or inauguration of it have them both happened in the last 9 years for many activities for which no beginning was there we laid the foundation we also made sure that it is launched it's not as if like some of the projects launched 60 years ago rail route bridge flyover foundation was laid it wasn't completed but that's not prime minister modi's style of functioning he lay the foundation he'll also ensure it is launched and it is ready to serve people that's the kind of emphasis we have given for northeast i've given you just a sample of what we've done only to prove that we walk the talk and in our hearts northeast is always present so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity